So today's session, we're going to in today's session, we're going to talk about the Festo Servo Press. This is a solution that was created by Festo by combining different components um, from uh, from from the like the, the catalogs from Festo. And I'm going to show you here a quick overview of what these components are. So you can see there on the camera, right? Um, the first, and I guess the main component that we have here is this actuator right here. So this is a bolt screw actuator, and it's a, you, you can see that it's like a piston rod, like a pneumatic piston rod. But the difference between this one and a pneumatic piston or a pneumatic actuator is what we have here on the left, right? So this is a bolt screw actuator driven by a servo motor. So we have our servo motor here. We have a, a parallel mounting kit here. And if we follow the mechanics, down here, what we have, this is a uh, force sensor. So the, fir the force sensor is coupled mechanically to the piston rod, okay? So this force sensor, this force sensor has an M12 connector here, an M12 cable that goes uh, to the back of, of this display that I have here or this demo. Uh, and I'm going to talk about briefly about that in just a second. This is just a display that we, that we use at Festo, okay? And that's basically what you have on the front. Uh, on the very bottom, usually we use this to show um, an application. Let me see if I can get it from here. Um, we usually use it to show an application by uh, pushing a spring, right? So if we were to graph the force, we will see the spring constant, okay? That's what we do. But in this case, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be using a couple of products that I found around the house. So these are just plastic caps from, from some bottles. And what I'm going to be showing later is I'm just going to be uh, closing these caps, right? Usually there's definitely, there's a ton, a, like a ton of different applications that you can do with a servo press, really uh, across all of the different industries, mainly in the electronics and assembly industry, where you might be pushing an element into a PCB or maybe mounting. Um, I, for example, I, I did an application where we were when when where we were mounting a heat sink into a P, into a into a PCB. So there's really a lot of applications. But let me keep talking about the components here for just a second. If I go back here, what we have on the back is we have the servo press controller. So this is just the controller that's. Uh, that's controlling whatever is happening in the in the process. And then down here, we have the servo drive. So this is the drive that motors that, uh, that motors that drives that servo motor on the front that I showed you just a second ago. And then the other thing that I, that we have here is just this ethernet switch. And that's about it. I mean, here in the back, there's nothing, there's nothing crazy or anything like that. This is, think about this as the brains, right? Now, what's interesting about the servo press controller is that we have different um, connectivity uh, or connectivity to different protocols. For example, we have Ethernet IP, we have Profinet, we have uh, Modbus TCP, and, um, and, and so on. Let me, just give me a second. Let me, uh, I think there's someone else waiting. Okay. So where was I? Right, on this demo case here on the right, I have some buttons that I'm going to be using for the manual demonstration. So basically a start, auto, uh, uh, clear error, and so on. That's, that's in a nutshell what I have here. So let me focus this camera again into the process itself. There we go. Okay, so let's go over here. Now, the nice thing about this, this, this solution is that it uses a, uh, you don't need any special software to be able to program it. I mean, the, the servo press itself, you can just do it by going, going into a standard web browser, like, like right now I'm using Google Chrome. You can use like Mozilla Firefox, Internet Explorer, or so on. I usually recommend Google Chrome, but anyways. The, the, what I did here is I just basically typed in the, the IP address of the, of the device, of the servo press controller, which is this one, 192.168.42 in my case. And I guess I can do it again if you really want to see the process, 192.168.42. I typed that in and it takes me to this page. And in this page, I just basically go in here, click on this, on this part over here, and it takes me directly into the software control um, or into the software for the servo press. Okay, so now here I already have a couple of programs that I created and now you can see a result that I, I had from earlier when I was doing some testing. Um, so what I'm going to show you is how you usually create a program in the servo press. Log in, 
and I'm going to type in the password here. This this password is um, defined in the in the user manual. Uh, in, 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 if at any point during this session you have any questions, you feel free to unmute yourself or type in them in the type in the, type the questions in the chat, and we can discuss. Um, so, anyways, yeah, Alejandro, feel free to unmute, unmute yourself. Question. Quick question. Um, you said that you can connect on a web browser, right? Yeah. So that means that you're gonna have to have a PC connected right. to this. So mm -hmm. can we still use like a HTML? HTML screen, like an HMI that we just have yes. a web browser yes. then PC? That is a great question, yes. Uh, as, long as, your, as long as your HMI supports HTML, uh, yes, you should be able to display the same screen on your HMI. I, I know that there are multiple vendors out there for HMIs, and, and yes, we have, we've already had a couple of customers do this, where they display this on the, in the HMI. But that's a great question. Um, so, Going back to, to this. So the first thing that you're going to do whenever you, you start this up is you're going to configure the hardware. So you configure, what do I have? What's the size of servo press that I have? And you can see here, you have some drop down menus. So you have the different forces. The one that I have here in my living room today, it's a 0 0.8 kilonewton uh, servo press. Uh, and then you, you, you just configure different, different things here. And you can see it's just five different parameters that you have to configure here. And also the, 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 uh, the, cylinder, the actuator stroke and so on. Right? I'm not going to modify anything at this point um, because I want to focus mainly on how you program it here because I think that's really cool how you do that. Um, one, the one last thing that I'm going to show you from here is system settings. Here you can select, for example, how or which kind of field bus you're going to be using to control the servo press. So you can see the protocols here. You can control it via TCP IP, Modbus TCP, Ethernet IP, Profinet IO, or OPC UA. So TCP IP means that you would be able to control it directly from a computer, right? If, you're, if you have a C-sharp application uh, or a Python application, you can, you can control it via TCP IP. Same thing with Modbus TCP, right? Modbus TCP, you can do it on, on C-sharp as well. And Ethernet IP and Profinet IO, I guess you can use those um, specifically if you're controlling this with a PLC, right? Like a Rockwell PLC or a Siemens PLC. OPC UA, now that opens uh, a, a new, completely new possibilities because that's really an, an open communication protocol that you can use with multiple, um, with multiple um, uh, PLCs out there. So anyways, uh, that's it from here. It's a, a quick question. Um, yeah. Is the speed relevant in terms of the different type of protocols that you're using? How, how you manage to get the information that you get at the same time stamp or how, how is the difference between different protocols? Yeah, that's, that's a good question as well. So the speed in this case, the, the communication speed in this case doesn't really affect the process itself because the way that the server press works, and I guess I can, um, well, I, I'll just explain it. The way that the server press works is you're only, you're only sending it uh, commands to either start or uh, stop or something, um, maybe an abort signal, but the abort, you can also handle, it, handle, it, handle the abort signal directly via electrical signals, right? Uh, so you don't have any delays, but you're only communicating to start and to get the results back. The actual control of, for example, the servo motor, the real time um, uh, control happens within the servo press controller. So there's not really anything that you have to process on your PLC or whatever you're using to control it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you, yeah. Okay, perfect. So let's jump into the, into the programming environment. How does it work? Right now, I have two programs right here. So I have blue cap and gray cap. Why? Because of what I showed you earlier here, right? So I have two different cups, cups, different sizes, and of course they require different forces to be to be closed. So I created these two um, these two uh, programs yesterday, and I'm going to quickly show you how you will create a new program. But before I do that, there's something really important that I, I want to discuss at this point related to servo press applications. And that is that whenever you're doing a servo press application, for example, I know that some of you guys might be more inclined to the, towards the controls side and some of you guys might be more inclined towards the mechanical side, right? A servo press application is really the synergy between the two. So a controls guy that's, that's really good on the control side and software, it, it's not gonna be able to to set this 
this solution or set a servo press to work correctly if he doesn't have the mechanical parameters for whatever he's pressing, right? And I can tell you this from experience because we've had some cases before where I was working with controls guys and I, I tell them how to move it, how to execute a program, how to do everything, and they are able to do it. But then, for example, on this blue cap, they at one point they might say, okay, yeah, I, I know how to how how to go down, how to go up, how to do everything, but the, the million dollar question here is how much force do I need to accurately close this product, right? And not damage it, of course. So these kind of parameters, mechanical parameters are defined by whoever designed this product, right? And usually this is a mechanical engineer or, um, or it's, a, it's, a, it's specified on a drawing or something like this, right? So that's why it's really important that whenever you're working on, on a server press application, you know uh, the application parameters, the mechanical parameters, all right? So just keep that in mind because that's really, really uh, critical. I'm going to show you an example right here. So for example, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to um, create a new program here. How do I do that? And this is not going to be a real part or anything because we don't have we don't have enough time. But I'm just going to select an empty slot here, new program, and then I just have to assign a program name. For example, uh, online session, online session, and then OK. Now, once I create that, I go into this part where it says this is the sequencer, right? It says here configure sequencer. This is the beauty about this solution, that the program sequence can be created within, the, within the, uh, this interface. I don't have to be an expert in ladder logic. I don't have to be an expert in structured text programming or anything like that. I can create it, everything from here and, and with basic uh, language, right? So for example, insert a new step. Uh, I have to select the, the, the first step, insert the new step. And now here I can command it to do something, right? For example, what's the function that you want to establish? I want to go into position mode, okay? And if you don't know what this position mode and what, what all of these different uh, options are here, you always have this help button. And there's also some online help that you can, now you can read the manuals and stuff like that. But position mode, it sounds very uh, intuitive, I guess, at this point. Position mode. Do you want to move in absolute or relative? Absolute would mean every, every time you're considering that you're moving from zero. So if I say uh, 50 millimeters, it would be true 50 millimeters. If I say 100, then it will be move 100 according, uh, uh, um, um, considering the zero point. <clears throat> A relative move would be if I'm moving relative to the last position. So for example, if I executed a position of 10 millimeters and then I do a relative move of 10 millimeters, it's gonna be 20, right? Because 10 plus 10, it's 20. And then, and then another relative of 10 and so on, it keeps adding up. Usually, um, I think in most applications I use absolute, but you can also use relative. It's, it's up to you, the application that you're doing. But anyways, I'm just gonna show you here a quick example. Target position, where do you wanna move to? I want to move, for example, let's say uh, up to 10 millimeters. What's the maximum force that you wanna move at? So right now you can see here on, on the right-hand side, on the upper right, that there's an actual force going on, right? Because there's, a, there's a, a weight on the tool, there's also an oscillation on the analog value and so on. You can clear this, this, this uh, value by using a tear function later on. But anyways, if I leave this to zero right now, and I want to do a position, a position, a target position to 10, it's going to give me an error because once I start this move, it's gonna say, hold on, hold on, hold on. You told me that the maximum force allowed was zero, but the actual force, it's 0.2, for example. So now it says, I already exceeded my force, right? So usually you're gonna, you're gonna specify a maximum force here. For example, I'm just gonna say 10 newtons for now, right? Just to be above that threshold. And then the velocity, of course, you specify how fast you want the actuator to move. So I'm just going to do five millimeters. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do a, a another move. And I, I'm just going to do the, this quickly. Another move to, how, where was the other one? 10. So I'm going to do this to 13 with a maximum force of, I don't know, uh, 500, a velocity of two. And the last one, I'm going to insert a new step. And then I'm going to go back to zero with a maximum force of 500, for example. Um, why 500? If I'm going down, I'm, mo uh, I'm moving, uh, let me see, I'm moving down, 
right? And I'm expecting that, I don't know, maybe at that position, I'm going to start touching this part over here, which is the, which, which has a spring on the bottom. So if there's a spring, there's going to be a certain resistance, right? So if there's already a resistance, I'm, I'm going to have a force. If I will leave this to zero, for example, or a, a low force like 10, then it will say I cannot make this move because I'm already at 500, right? Or 600 or whatever it's going to be. So that's why I'm setting it at a high force because I'm going to be moving up. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then a velocity of 10, right? So I'm oh, going... Oh, sorry, Sandro. Um, so all these is just engineering engineering units, right? You don't have to scale any factor, any weird values somewhere else. It's all pre-programmed already? All pre-programmed, yes. You okay. don't have to... So at, this, at this point, you didn't touch yet uh, any Alan Bradley code or anything else, right? No, Everything not yet. On the, web, on, on the web page. Everything is on the web page, yes. Okay. Great. I'm just showing how you will create a program and I'm just going to skip this and jump into the programming side because we have like 12 minutes left. Uh, so next, uh, next and then save. So let me see, here's my program, right? And I'm going to go into operation. I'm going to switch my program to online session. You can see here the active program. The, the program before was, you see, gray cap. I changed my program to online session. So now if I start this program, uh, let me hide this. You see my, my sequence here. If I start this program, it should execute that sequence that I just programmed right now, right? So let me do that. I'm going to um, hit the, the start over here. And you see it's moving down. And you, you, you could clearly see the movement on the, on the servo press. Maybe I can accelerate it a little bit so you, it's more clear. But that's how quickly I created a, a movement with a servo drive, right? With a servo motor and an axis. It's super intuitive. Really, I hope that in the future, it was as easy as, as, as this to program everything because anyone can just go in here. It's like a, it's like a robot, right? When you're programming a robot with a, with, a, with a teach pendant, you only specify the positions and then you just hit go and that's it. Um, so let me increase the speed so it's more um, visible. Actually, I'm going to make a transition. For example, I'm going to go to two millimeters on the first position. The other one, I'm going to leave it at 13, but I'm going to uh, increase the speed to 20. And then when it moves back up, I'm going to make it really quick, like uh, 40, right? So save, next. Oops, what did I, what did I do here? I click something that I shouldn't. Uh, 10, 20, and 40. Yeah, it was saved. So I go back to operation. And then I'm going to exit, execute it again, and you'll see the movement. So uh, there it goes the start. You see? So pretty easy move, right? So now let's execute a program, a real program. That I just wanted to show you how that works from there. But if I execute a program here, for example, the blue cap. The blue cap, what this is going to do is first it's going to tear. tear the tear function is basically setting the, the force to zero. Whatever value you're getting it, you're setting it to zero. Similar to when you go and buy something that requires weight, uh, taking the weight, that you want to make sure that it starts at zero, right? So I'm, st I'm setting it to zero, and then I'm executing a position mode to a certain height, and then I transition to force mode. What I do is first I touch the part s with the sensor, so it's just touching it barely, so it detects the part, and then I'm going to start closing the cap, right? That's basically what's going to happen here. So I'm going to put the cap in there. And then I'm just going to execute the program, and you'll see what's going to happen. So I execute the program. It's closing the cap right now. I can hear it clicking. And then it, clo it tried to close the cap, but something happened. It didn't do it. Now, the nice thing about this software is that you can also get the graphs directly here. So, for example, you see the graph here. This was the force that was exerted on that part. You can see a relationship here between position and force. And then I have some evaluation methods. So, like these windows right here. With these windows, I can specify the graph should go through this window, right? 
it should go through this window, it should go through this window, and it should cross this line. It didn't happen, right? It did not happen. That's why the, the last part was bad, and you can see it here. So it's, it's a bad part. For some reason, it didn't happen. Let me, let me try and run it again and see if it, if it does it this time. So start. It's trying to close it. And it didn't happen. Why? Because now you can see that it, it did finish the whole graph, but on this, this window right here, I specified on this window that it should never cross the top portion. It should enter through the left. So you see that little small, uh, small arrow there on the left? I'm specifying that it should cross through the left. It should never cross to the top or to the, uh, or to the right. That's why that, that, that piece failed. So at this point, all of the programs, I'm executing the programs through the, um, um, through the uh, web, web visualization, right? I'm going to execute the other one, the gray cap. So I changed the program to the gray cap, and then I'm just gonna hit start here on the, on the demo. So it's going, it's going. It closed the cap. So now here, what I wanted to show you is that I have a different evaluation method. So you see these, blue, these green lines, and by the way, this part was good. You see these, these green lines? Basically what I did is I created a tunnel, right? So I created a tunnel and I'm telling the force, you should, you should always go through this tunnel. If you, uh, like for example here, let me try to zoom in. If you exceed this tunnel, for example, this peak over here was really, really close to exceeding that tunnel. If that peak would have been higher, the force at that point would have been higher, then the part would have been bad. Okay, that's why at the very beginning I told you that it's really important that you know how um, what what what's the expected uh, behavior of the of uh, mechanical behavior of the part. Okay, so that that's it in in terms of programming. We don't have enough time to to show you more things here. Before we finish the call for today, I wanted to show you um, that how how you control it on the on a PLC, right? So on the PLC, we have the function blocks to control the servo press. And basically what you do, let me try to, oops. So basically what you do here, let me zoom in, there we go, is with these function blocks, you have, you can enable the press, for example, um, you can enable the press, you can home the press, what the, all of the things that I did here, you can start the press process. So instead of me pushing that button on the right hand side, I can just send a bit here and it'll do it. Um, I can do a board, I can change the program and so on. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to try to download this now. Uh, before I do that, I actually need to change the control here to Ethernet IP. It's currently on Ethernet IP, but it's, it was going, it's, it was controlled, it, it was being controlled by the web visualization. So right now I change it to um, Ethernet IP, and then I go back here. I'm just gonna download that program real quickly. Before I keep going and, and chatting here, do you guys have any questions? Feel free, uh, as we mentioned on the posts on LinkedIn, feel free to ask in Spanish, English, French, doesn't matter. You can type in your questions there in the chat if you have also questions, comments, concerns. This is downloading. And we should be ready in just a second here. Uh, okay, thank you, Zoom. There we go. So now I go back to remote run. What I did on my program is I just created, um, just created a program for visualization. I called it supervisor. And here I'm just going to, for example, connect. So right now you saw that these bits uh, came on and that's because the servo press is now online. So basically I connected to the servo press and now what I can do is I can, for example, start a home. Right, and you, you're going to see there on the on the servo press, it's going to go up. Did it go? Uh, 
think so. So the other thing that I can do is I can select a different program. So there I switch to a, a different program, program number two, and then I load this program. Right. And I think, let me see here, I think I should be able to start the, um, the sequence by hitting this auto cycle. There you go. So it tried to do it. <clears throat> it tried to start the cycle, but why did it not do the cycle? Because that part is al was already processed, right? It, it's already closed. That's why. Because I have some, I have some on the program here. I have um, some movements that say if there's no force at certain point, that means that the part was already closed. So now you can skip that part. These kind of things, you can do it without going into the Allen Bradley world or without going into the Siemens world or your host PLC, right? Uh, so I'm going to open the part again. Now it's open. I'm going to put it back in and then start the press cycle again. And now you can see it's going again. And if I go back to here, you can see it just generated a new graph because it just executed the program. So right now, I think because again, it's a very short period of time that we have for this session. It seems, it might, might seem like daunting at this point, but it's not really daunting. What I'm doing here, it's I'm just calling, uh, where's the AOI here? I'm just calling these variables, like what I, what I just did now, I just toggled this bit to, uh, no, sorry, not that one. I just toggled this start press process. I just set it to one. And what, it ha what happens, it, it just executes the program. When the program is executed, it gives me, a, it gives me some feedback uh, here, result okay. So now I, I could tie this into my sequence and say, oh, the result is okay. I can keep doing something else. Uh, I can continue working with my indexing table or whatever you have, right? Say, the nice thing is you can see the, the AOI right here, the function log, right? I have exactly the same thing for different environments. So for example, this is codices, right? Same function block, same variables. I have the same thing for Siemens. So same function block, same thing. I, um, I'm, I, I just run out of time right now, but what I could do is I could just unplug the cable from, oh, by the way, this is the, the Rockwell PLC that I'm using. Um, so I could just unplug this cable from the Ethernet IP master, and I can just plug it in into my codices master, and um, I could control the same servo press with a different PLC. That's how easy it is to do, right? The, all of the program, all of the sequence, resides in here in this in the servo press controller anyways that's it for today it was a, a, a short session that's uh how we intended it to be um this is recorded this session was recorded so we're going to post it later on for for you to watch at your own pace and if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us uh to to um or during uh i mean in our linkedin or you can send us an email if you don't have our email this is uh this is my email uh right there. So feel free to also send me an email or just post on LinkedIn any questions that you might have. And if also, if you have any suggestions for future topics that you want to see on these sessions, feel free to suggest those topics as well. We're, we're uh, willing to uh, prepare anything that you might be interested in. All right. So I'll just leave one more minute for anyone that might have any questions. If you don't have any questions, you're free to go. Thank you for joining today. Thanks, Sandra. It's pretty good. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Bye, Sandro. Bye. Se ve muy sencillo. Realmente es muy sencilla la la comunicación con Rockwell y todo, ¿no? Sí, 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 es muy sencillo. Es muy está bastante sencillo. Eh, y como le, como les platicaba ahorita, eh, básicamente es eso, ejecuta, cambiar programa, qué programa quieres ejecutar, ejecútalo, toda la secuencia está en, las, en, la, en el controlador de la servo prensa y tienes un resultado y ya. Ahora, hay mucha más funcionalidad que puedes este, sacar de la servo prensa, por ejemplo, puedes transferir todo el, el puedes hacer un login, ¿verdad? por ejemplo, de los diferentes puntos, de las fuerzas, de las partes, del número de serie, etcétera, lo puedes mandar por FTP, eso es algo de lo que no hablé, pero pues no hay suficiente tiempo. Aquí hay un login, 
configure logging, lo puedes guardar en una memoria USB, lo puedes guardar en la, en la SD, lo puedes mandar por FTP. FTP es el que yo he usado. Entonces, lo que hago es que ahí nada más configuro el, el servidor FTP y lo manda directo desde la Servoprens. Entonces, está, está, está muy bueno, está muy buena la, la, la solución. Sí, sí, lo, lo, lo chévere de esto es que puedes tener un Rockwell conectado y al mismo tiempo puedes tener un HMI que funcione directamente con la Servopress. Entonces, no interfieres en el programa directamente del Rockwell, no tienes nadie que cambie el programa, simplemente modificas ciertos parámetros para el operador. Exacto. Y ya el resto es, es activar y desactivar señales. Fíjate. Lo cual simplifica un... mucho. Exacto. Un ejemplo así súper fácil. Si yo cambio, eh, si por ejemplo me voy acá al programa y cambio, vamos a decir, ah, es que ahorita está el, el 3. Si te fijas, ahorita no me deja cambiar el programa desde acá porque uh -huh. la, la servoprensa dice, yo no tengo el control. El control lo tiene uh -huh. un host, un PLC, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Entonces, lo que yo hago es que me voy aquí y en mi supervisor ya tengo algo aquí para cambiar el programa. Le pongo 3 y luego le pongo carga este programa. Después ya me dice, ok, ya tengo el programa 3 cargado. Me regreso aquí y ya ves que está seleccionado, ¿no? Lo que puedo hacer es, como tú dices, yo mi secuencia la puedo cambiar desde aquí si yo quiero, ¿verdad? La puedo cambiar desde aquí y decirle, ¿sabes qué? Ahora quiero que te vayas hasta, a, no sé, a 17. Le doy grabar. Una vez que lo doy grabar, ya puedo salirme de aquí. Le puedo dar nexo, le puedo dar cancel y ya. Y me regreso a Rockwell. Y puedo ejecutar ese programa otra vez. Ahí, déjame, quito la pieza porque si no le voy a aplastar. Este, puedo ejecutar este programa. Si te fijas, ahora se fue hasta 17. No, a lo mejor no lo vimos aquí, ¿verdad? Pero sí se fue hasta 17 sin yo tener que cambiar nada en Rockwell. Todo está hecho desde la servo prensa. Ahora, última cosa que voy a mencionar hoy es otra, otra super ventaja es que estas posiciones, si te fijas, yo puse un valor numérico aquí pero tú también puedes meter una variable. Tuvimos una aplicación en la que un cliente hizo específicamente esto. Sus partes, la, la, la parte que estaban pre, eh, prensando tenía diferentes alturas. Entonces, sí, claro. ya, ya ahí entras a hacer un recipe en otro lugar, eh, directamente en el Rockwell, entonces exacto. ya tienes ventaja en los dos, en los dos lados. Exacto, exacto. exacto. Entonces, oye, Sandro, entonces esta parte de meter variables, por ejemplo, nos podría ayudar a nosotros en la aplicación acá donde hacen las bocinas nos pidieron de inicio, ya ves que la servoprensa solo te da 20 modelos. Ajá. Entonces, resultó que después les gustó cómo funcionó y querían más, pero entonces poder hacerlo por variables nos podría ayudar a tener más posiciones. Definitivamente. Claro. Sí, porque si, si, el, si por ejemplo, vamos a suponer que todas las, las bocinas tienen el mismo, el mismo proceso, que es, ah, voy a prensar a cierta altura y luego ya me voy a regresar. Exactamente, nada más asignas estas variables y, y tienes infinito, infinita cantidad de, de modelos, en, en, en realidad. Sí se puede hacer. Órale, órale, gracias. Y es que puedes combinar, permíteme, no, permite, dale, sigue, sigue tranquilo. Ah, ok, gracias, gracias. No, te iba a preguntar, básicamente también otra pregunta que me hacen mucho y es la diferencia entre el modo posición y el modo fuerza. Eh, uh -huh. el, en el modo fuerza se puede decir que tú tienes de target alcanzar una fuerza sin importar una posición y en el, en el, en el posición es la inversa, se podría decir. Es, esa es una pregunta muy común que puede causar confusión. Te, lo que está preguntando Alberto es cuál es la diferencia entre estos dos, ¿no? Posición, position mode y force mode. Y ese, es exactamente eso. En position mode, tú le estás diciendo, quiero que vayas a, a esta 17 milímetros sin exceder 500 newtons. Si tú estás a 16.5 y ves 502 newtons, párate. Y, 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 y aquí puedes configurar qué es lo que quieres que haga en Failure Reaction, ¿no? Párate, pero eso significa que la parte está mal, ¿sí? Es lo que pasó, eso fue lo que yo configuré acá con la parte. Si le, yo le dije, si estás bajando y no ves determinada fuerza, entonces significa que la pieza ya está prensada, ¿verdad? Esa es Position Mode. Si se excede cierta fuerza, párate. Force Mode es, cambias ahora. Ahora le dices... Quiero que vayas a cierta fuerza sin exceder una posición. ¿Ah? Entonces yo le digo, quiero que vayas a 500 newtons. Vas a seguir prensando, prensando hasta que veas 500 newtons. Si no ves 500 newtons, pero ves una posición de 100, 100 perdón, de, de 55 milímetros, por ejemplo, te va a decir, ah, fue una falla porque excedí la, el target force, eh, perdón, excedí la posición antes de, exceder, antes de llegar a mi target force. Esa es la diferencia básicamente. Vale, gracias, Andro. Perdón, ahora sí, Alejandro, tu turno. No, eh, te iba a comentar que en, lo, en la cuestión de recipe, eh, la creación del recipe normalmente 
es chévere tener esa opción porque tú creas casi que unos placeholders en el programa de la Servo Press, uh -huh. con lo cual haces programas de base y ya inyectas la variable que necesitas al programa que necesitas. Entonces, casi, casi que creas variables ilimitadas en la memoria de Rockwell, en donde puedes crear un array con diferentes valores, cambias el index desde una pantalla o incluso desde donde quieras, desde el mismo programa, y accedes a esa variable y la inyectas directamente al programa. Entonces, con eso haces que el operador no tenga que interactuar con ciertas variables que son muy precisas para el proyecto, o para, o para la pieza como tal, pero uh -huh. también te permite tener muchas más opciones para, para programar luego. Claro, claro. No, sí, sí, definitivamente este, el uso de las variables es, 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 este, es muy, muy, este, puede beneficiar mucho. Pero para serles sincero, eh, no, eh, han sido muy limitadas las aplicaciones en las que hemos necesitado usar variables. Por lo, porque tiene, si ya tienes diferentes valores acá, ¿no? Entonces muchas veces los clientes... Tienen cinco piezas, diez piezas, etcétera, y ya nada más reprograman aquí si quieren. Pero ahí está, o sea, la función está ahí. Tengo que irme claro, a, sí, sí. sí, tengo que irme a otra junta, pero este nos vemos en un, par, en un par de semanas con el próximo tema. Eh, ahí luego mandamos la invitación para los que estén interesados. Claro. Chale, claro. Gracias, Sandro. Muchas gracias, Sandro. Cuídate. Dale, hasta luego. Gracias, Sandro. Chao. Hasta luego, Alejandro. Bye. Muy bye, bien. que estén bien. Yeah. Chao. Cuídense, hasta luego. Chao. Bye. Nos vemos, Sandro. Chao. Chao.